older and uh, when you're you miss being a kid when you can make mistakes and people can laugh now they make mistakes and you know it's a little different <laughs> so we really enjoyed having them they've been a good team uh, and they're going to kind of show you what they've done uh, and, and they can do all their own stuff and then Jack, if you want to say a few things for these guys since you're the mentor man I'm gonna try Jack. uh sure i don't know what i'm gonna say though <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hi everyone, I'm Jacob. I was, I guess, these guys mentors for the last little bit. I guess real quick, a little background on me. I'm a electrical and computer engineer from ANAP. So I guess whenever we got started with these guys, we wanted to think of a project that would get their hands wet in both hardware and software, kind of figure out what they want to do and give them some knowledge in that realm. So we set up this little project with the fish. And that being said, I will let them elaborate a bit more on what they did and what they were. Very cool. So first off, let me introduce myself. My name is Caleb Lin. Uh, I'm part of the hardware team for this project, and uh, I'm representing uh, John B. Conley right now. And uh, I want to thank Ms. Hammock and uh, David Conver for, for this opportunity. And uh, yeah, so um, we're just going to introduce you to ourselves one by one. Yeah, I'm Valerie Clovo. I'm Ms. Primo. I'm Demetri Kingfana. I'm Denny Dow. I'm Madison Press. And I'm Nicholas White. We're going to show a quick demo of what we've accomplished so far. But I feel so much better. <laughs> Tell me a joke. Tell me a joke. Why don't fish play basketball? Because they're afraid of the net. <laughs> Tell me a joke. What do you call a fish that needs help with her vocals? Auto tuna. <laughs> what do you think about the IBM interns? <laughs> wow, these are some of the best IBM interns ever. Do I need to say more? <laughs> Alright, so let me explain what Project Into is and you know, how we integrated it into that vision. So uh, Project Into is basically integrating mental processing like humans with using uh, cognitive services like text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and uh, conversations, just putting it inside like everyday devices pretty much. So it's like cell phones or anything. It's an easy way to, for coding, like it gives us like a guide to do it. So it requires minimum coding and just overall So we knew from the beginning that we wanted to give the fish its own personality. It came with, uh, it came as it is. It's actually very unique to me. I've never seen a type of fish like this before. It, it's actually pretty interesting. So I, we, the guys and I, we went together and we tried to see what the fish actually originally does. And it plays uh, back two songs. Uh, one is Take Me to the River and it plays back um, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And so, I mean, I thought that was pretty interesting. So the way it works is you would go, originally you would go across it, it has like a little motion sensor right here, and then it would start singing the song like right away, and it has a bunch of, has a, has a tail motor, a head motor, and a mouth motor, and they all move corresponding with the song. And that same, you can also manually uh, activate its uh, songs by um, pressing that red button there. So anyways, besides that, we so aside from its original functionality, we wanted to take the services into that we already had and put it into the fish. So we then, so we then went to unbox. Yes. What what's Intu? Intu is one of the boxing services that help. Uh, it's just integrating the the text to speech like text into speech. like everyday devices. So we can do that with a fish, with a simple fish. That's all it so when we give it commands, it'll know how to respond back with certain keywords. Thanks. So then from there, we we really want to see what was inside the fish while really powering it. So we opened it up and we found that um, it has a has a logic board where it gets all the commands and like it's all connected to wires and stuff. It has uh, three motors: a, a head motor, a mouth motor, and a tail motor, as you saw earlier. That they all move with the song. So and also with the text to speech earlier that we were using. So then from there, also inside the fish, it has besides the motors, it also has a speaker that we removed and uh, we added our own speaker for for application for application for purposes. And so from there, after we unscrewed all the other stuff, we removed the, the logic board completely from the fish, and we added a Raspberry Pi, which is a little computer. And so then 
that was the very start of that. And as Vincent was saying, in order to replace the original logic board that we had just taken out, we decided to use a Raspberry Pi. In this case, we used a Model 3 version that we were able to run into on. The idea behind the Raspberry Pi came from IBM's TJ Box. And using the basis of these little guys, we were able to easily hook up the Raspberry Pi, the microphone, and the speaker. Um, in order to power the fish motors without overdrawing from the Pi and accidentally frying it, we had to include a power harness. In this case, we're using a 4AA power, power harness, but we could have also used the 4C battery harness that came with the fish. Um, we also incorporated in our design a breadboard to make an H-bridge. The H-bridge was needed to effectively and efficiently hook up the Pi's output signals to the fish's motors. To make sure we didn't lose connection from the Pi or the power harness, we had to use a L29 3D motor driver chip and that amplified the signal, so it made sure it reached the motors. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, this is uh, some of the starting that we had to do, part of the hardware aspects that we had to work on in this uh, project. Uh, that's my hand and Kevin's hand. We're working together <laughs> trying to solder these wires together <laughs> so that like the connection was strong and that current was, was flowing well with the fish. Well, and then onto the software part which was me, Dimitri, and Madison. To maximize time, we split up further with me working on workshop two, which is conversation, and then working on workshop three and five. Workshop two, which was conversation. And conversation is a service on the, on the cloud platform Lumix, which allows users and applications to communicate naturally and effectively. We did this by creating new intents, which were questions that would that people would typically ask the fish, that's entities, which were keywords from those questions that the, device, the fish would pick up on. And using those keywords, it would randomly pick out a, res a response that pertains to that keyword. And that's how we gave it a natural personality, and that's how it get, got its jokes and all of its dialogue which can be seen here, which goes from the dialogue to chit chat, which is where we got the entities, and then it goes all the way down to, oh, jokes, chit chat jokes, which are here, and it picks up, right here, and it picks up and uses random jokes from that we've added to the fish. So in order to get the Raspberry Pi up and running, we use uh, we were assisted by workshops, which Dimitri looks like. I am part of the software team, which Denny had mentioned earlier. I was, me and Madison were mainly working on workshop three and five. Workshop three was creating emotion agents where the fish could pick up your voice and see what, whether you were positive or negative to better respond to you. Whenever we were using workshop five, that's the one that mainly got the fish to actually work and basically integrated the jokes and everything into it. So what we ended up doing, we first had to get set up the Raspberry Pi, the actual mind of the fish. Whenever we were setting it up, we had to install programs such as Anaconda, Wiring Pi Library, and Self-SDK. Self-SDK is the main part that let it work properly. In the Self-SDK, we actually ended up having to build it properly in order for it to give proper signals and responses. For our fish to function properly, we needed the motors to run in sync with the audio relay from Watson. So what we ended up doing is we created a new gesture, separate from the speech gesture itself, in which we could incorporate our pin delay code. Although it was good, we decided we could do better. So what we ended up doing is we merged our modified gesture into the speech gesture of self to just make it wholesome and cohesive. So. After that, it was just a bunch of minor altercations in that modified gesture to make it make the fish seem a little less, a little less robotic. Here in, um, hi, I'm Madison. Uh, as Dimitri stated before, he and I both worked on workshops three and five, and 
build our Raspberry Pi up electronically. So what I'm going to do now is explain just how everything came together as in the simplest form I can. Um, in the beginning, our fish received its audio through its microphone. This raw audio then is transported into the Raspberry Pi to go to a text extractor. This text extractor is to just gather it up as data so that it can go into a class wait so that it can go onto the, onto the blackboard first and then into a text to speech program. The reason it has to do this is so that data can be read properly and taken to its proper classifier. Once the classifier has been <coughs> Once it's been properly read through a classifier, it will go back out into a blackboard and taken in, into blue mix, which will, which will take it into conversations. Conversations is basically what Denny had been talking about just a few minutes ago, making natural conversations through question intents and question agents, which creates say objects for for the text-to-speech program to use. Once the text-to-speech program is used, it will relay audio back up through the fish's speaker, giving us a voice to our lovely fish. <laughs> nice job. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that says it all. Give <laughs> a little more coffee there. <laughs> Double shots. Everyone. <laughs> and this is a video demo that further expands on what the fish does. And this was published yesterday, right? Yes. yes. Audio. Thanks, Alan. Make sure you audio set the crunch on. <laughs> You have to set the audio on the Oh yeah, So mentors are four. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's the volume level like on the pressure? It's really loud here, so it's on, two? Like it's on two. Yeah, it's on two. You guys can just do the voiceover. Yeah, I know we got yeah. the real deal here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, why have Memorex? <laughs> 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 uh, I feel so much better. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> could be better. Could be worse. <laughs> what is your name? Why is the money over there? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Tell me a joke. Oh, no. Now, now it's your name. Where did the beat? There we go. Yay. How are you? I'm doing all right, if I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> what happened now? How are you? I'm doing all right, if I do say so myself. Tell me a joke. What do you call a fish that needs help with his vocals? Auto tuna. Tell me a joke. Why did the vegan go deep sea fishing? Just for the hell of it. <laughs> What's the weather? My weather report for Austin currently says partly cloudy with a temperature of 87 degrees Fahrenheit. What time is it? 
by weather recurring drives to 46 feet out with a temperature of 8 degrees Fahrenheit. What is your name? What is your name? My name is Billy. Pleased to meet you. What is your favorite movie? I really like the movie The Matrix, as it considers the idea of code as reality. <laughs> Who's your favorite actor? I love watching Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor in the Terminator films. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Periwinkle is a spectacular color. <laughs> what do you think about the IBM interns? You are not wrong. So are the the responses that the fish gives to your questions pulled from the cloud or is those are those pre-programmed responses that you have to pre-program questions okay. with them? Those are pre-programmed questions, and then you can explain. Okay. Um, as I said before, the, the responses are pre-programmed questions, because, wait, it's like, with the response are pre-programmed responses, okay. but you would, because it would take a keyboard from your question, and then it would give out a random response that we have already put into. Okay. Well, so that's the, a little more color to that. So the answer is actually multiple answers. In the conversational elements where they've added chit chat and jokes, those are fairly hard coded into the conversational flow. The questions that use machine learning in the service to say, here's a question like we think they're going to ask, and if you vary the way you ask the question, it will still match up to the particular type of answer, like the joke. The weather questions are not hard coded, so how are they getting the answers to the weather? Uh, there's, there's, also, there's another service called Weather Locator that the conversation pulls answer from to answer your question so it uses the keyword weather yes and and what is weather and goes to that place to pull the weather for Austin yes. does, does it know it's in Austin yes it knows it's in Austin so, so if we took the fish to Dallas it would know it would and you asked it the weather would it answer it for Dallas yes if you applied a service that allows it to figure out the location there okay you can ask cities and states and countries. Yes. And how, you know, do you remember how, you, how it does that? How it knows which city state you're in? Can you ask about it? Another service. Yep, that's right. Yes. Alchemy. Alchemy. <laughs> Alchemy pulls out entities like city and state, so it, it passes to the service for the web. So it's got a lot more than they, they know. Yeah. 